Hello, good people. I welcome you to this very episode. It is my prayer that you that is watching me, that the good Lord will bless you. Amen. It's another beautiful time, another beautiful day. Peter B is one man I love to listen to because he has proven to be a man of character. I have checked through his antecedents over and over and have seen reasons to always look looking forward um, in listening to Peter Obi. That is the presidential flag bearer of the um, Labour Party. In recent time, Peter Obi was in Italy, he was in Rome, he was invited by the Supreme Pontiff, the, the Bishop of Rome, that is the Pope, uh, Pope Francis. And um, I mean, when you look at the reasons why he was invited, it will, it will marvel you. It goes a long way to talk about the person, the character of Peter Obi. And once again, Peter Obi talked about borrowing, you know, borrowing in, in our dear country, Nigeria. Actually, if you listen to Peter Obi very well, one of the cardinal problems we, our leaders have put Nigerians into is their failure to invest in education, just as Peter Obi has highlighted. Take a look at it. Most of the people involved in banditry, kidnapping, insurgency, and all sorts of social vices, majority of them never even had the basic education, especially our brothers from the north. It is as a result of their the lack of education, you know, lack of exposure to the basic, you know, education that majority of them lack the basic information that is required for them to grow mentally. Imagine you and I who have access to the internet, you and I who have access to information technology. We can easily source information by ourselves. So when, when you invest in education as a leader, you are not only bringing people out of poverty in the long run because the multipliers effect, the more knowledgeable people become, the easier for them to begin to invent and they technologically advance and move the nation. Apart from that, when you also invent in education, you are empowering people mentally. People can no longer be slaves to religious men and women. People can no longer be slaves to some certain school of thought that has no value for humanity. I would like you to listen to B2B. Each time I listen to B2B, what comes to my mind is Norman Vincent Peale. You know, there's a book I, I read some years ago, Positive Thinking. B2B is one man that when I listen to him, I remember this very book written by uh, Norman Vincent Peale. Let's listen to B2B and have a, you know, a glimpse of what um, true leadership should look like. Unless you are aware. We're, we're, we're development consistent. We're dealing with issues that are very important. We're dealing with the future of our children. It is important. We have borrowed so much in the past. What did we use it for? It's very easy to audit what it was used for. And then this one we're going to use, borrow, can we show in a prickly, verifiable, this is what we're going to use it for. And who are those who are technically serving that are borrowing this money and are applying it judiciously? We have, we have been in government where people just come from, no, come from nowhere, tell you, you must borrow for this, borrow for that. Why are we going to borrow money? We don't need to borrow money. We have areas we can cut, and we don't need to borrow. And I say to anybody, I was in government for eight years. We never asked anybody for a loan for one day. Not because we have, but because we could look whenever there's need to borrow. We first look inward and said, if we cut this and cut this and cut this and cut this, we don't need to borrow this money. And I believe there's areas where you can still do that, and areas where investing is it that we are borrowing money and throwing in education, so we can see that our schools have improved and changed and everything. Is it that we're borrowing money and putting it in health? so that our hospitals and everything and all that have improved? Is it that we're borrowing money and putting it on the so-called infrastructure? Where are the bridges? Where are the roads? Where are these that are completed that we can say we borrow this? Ruben, let me give you an example. We're talking. We've just borrowed, we've just done from 10 trillion to 25 trillion. So, are they 15? Nationally, whether I like it or not. Just Ibado, Lagos Ibado Express Road, which they've been building since God knows, since I was in university. <laughs> All they need is 200 billion. 
Okay, so let me ask. So you from this borrowing, just two hundred billion, thrown into that thing. Since then, it would have completed it. Would you then say that, for example, if we're looking at ways to cut down on certain budgets that shouldn't exist, would you comment or would you like to comment on the $100 million that's been budgeted for the uh, renovation of the National Assembly? In oh, the 20 37 billion. 37 billion naira yeah. is $100 million. $100 million budgeted for the renovation of the National Assembly. Well, let me tell you. There's so many places to cut. It's not just that. I tell you, I've sat to have an idea that the so the West is unacceptable. The cost of governance in Nigeria cannot be compared to anywhere. I've talked about governors, I've talked about presidents, I've talked about local government chairmen and everything. I've said it in this that it is unacceptable. The, the biggest, it, it will probably cost more to keep me as a governor than it will cost to keep us as, as prime minister of Britain. And I can tell you, That's because, sad. no, no, because if anybody in the UK sees Boris Johnson moving with five vehicles, <laughs> he won't be in office the next day. <laughs> I can Someone tell you. Walk down the road with his dog to no, no, no. <laughs> I said he will not be in the office the next day yeah. with that level of convoy. Talk less of this thing. If you eat in White House, you pay. Or in 10 Downing Street, if you invite somebody, a guest, you pay. to come for dinner, at the end of the month, they'll give you the bill. Anyway. In my, in my, in said, I can bring my entire village. It'll be it. Nobody cares. Yes, it's their share of the national kick. But, I mean, all morning you've been referring to education. You know, um, although I was going to draw the attention, your attention to the fact that in the budget proposal for 2020, education is actually number three on the list. After defense and then uh, power, works and housing, and then you have education. But I know you are very passionate about the education, given your record in Anambra State. And only a week ago, uh, you met with the Pope uh, to work with, uh, you know, a foundation uh, set up by the Vatican uh, to promote education. Not by the Vatican. Okay, but what are they? Did you hear that? National Assembly budget slated at hundred million dollars, uh, or did I hear that very well? I mean, it's really very sad. If that is true, hundred million dollars is enough to buy a speed train. If not a speed train, some kind of uh, train can be purchased with that humongous amount of money slated for the renovation of the National Assembly. <laughs> My dear brothers and sisters, we are in a deep shit. And I hope that people will wake up from their slumber. If you are benefiting from the government, from the bad governance in our country, if you are benefiting from it, ask yourself this question once again. How much will be given to you for you to sell your soul? How much will be given to you for you to sell your conscience? Are you going to continue to benefit? Is this benefit going to permanently be there and for your children and for your children's children? Think of the people who are living homeless in, on the street of Lagos. Think of people who are homeless in the street of Kano. Think of people who are homeless in different cities in Nigeria. Think of the unemployed graduates. Think of people who are wandering, praying, fasting day in, day out, waiting on God to, to perform miracles for them. Please, get your PVC and vote the right man. God bless you. We hope to see you sooner again. I remain your friend, Fidel De Castro. Bye for now.